Hello, we're going to be talking about a really important piece of legislation in the UK called the Data Protection Act. And before we talk about that specifically, let's just be really clear about what legislation is, because that's not a word which is used all the time. A word which is used all the time is a law. And effectively, legislation is just another word for a law. So these are usually set by parliaments, so politicians pa pass acts of parliament and they become laws. So we are, I think, used to thinking about laws as being only enforced by the police, which many laws are, but some laws are enforced by other government agencies, such as regulators. And this law, the Data Protection Act, is an example of one of those which isn't the police don't get involved in, it'll be regulators. And for most laws we're thinking about in IT, and for this law, the Data Protection Act, punishment is in the form of fines. People don't get arrested and dragged into prison for breaking these laws, but they can get very, very large fines. And it's not always the police for issue these, it can be other agencies. Okay, so one of the laws which can produce huge fines is the Data Protection Act, often shortened to DPA. So this law, the most recent version, came out in 2018. There was a version which was from 1998, but it's now been updated. This law works alongside the UK's version of a law called GDPR, which originated from the European Union, and the UK effectively adopted this European Union law, although despite us leaving the EU, we still have it, and it works alongside this other UK-only law called the Data Protection Act. So the DPA only applies if you are collecting information about people for an organisation. And so because it's about people, we're talking about personal information. Now, interestingly, this law doesn't apply if you're collecting information for your personal reasons. You are able to stand on a high street and film people, and that's perfectly fine. But if you're doing it for an organisation, it then comes under this law. So a slightly weird thing here, um, but it's all about organisations. Now, a couple of key terms which are useful to mention when you're talking about this law are, first of all, data controllers. A data controller is the organisation processing this information and the data subject is the person who the information is being collected or processed about. So controller, organisation, subject, the individual person. And this piece of legislation requires certain things which data controllers have to do. So a big one which affects all of us every time we go on a website is the controllers need to be really clear about what personal information they're collecting and what it is being used for. It's why you get loads of messages when you go onto a new website wanting to accept certain policies. This is the website trying to be clear about what the data is being used for. Whether you read it or not is, is kind of up to you. The controller also should only be keeping the personal information when it is needed. The second it becomes unnecessary, it should get deleted permanently. They also need to, under the law, provide information security. The law doesn't say specifically what this needs to be, or how much they need to spend, or what they need to do, but if there was a cyber attack and they didn't have security in place, that is when the fines can really kick in. And security is not only things like antivirus or firewalls or encryption, it can also be less, maybe obvious things like taking backups, which are important as well. And lastly, the, well, it's not, not the only thing, but the, the last main thing I want to mention is controllers also need to make sure the information is kept up to date and is kept accurate. So that's why, again, often organisations get in touch with you, asking you to update your address, asking you to update your number. That's partly for their own purposes, but also partly to follow this law. So if organisations don't do any of these four things, then again, they could get fined and that could be millions of pounds in some cases. There are also a few things which are specific to data subjects, so really rights that all of us individuals have. Well, one right is we are allowed to see what personal data is being stored about us. So we're able to launch what is called a subject access request, sometimes shortened to SAR. This is when we basically contact, inform the controller about what information you want to see and the organisation has to give it to us. They should ask for ID to make sure we're not just requesting some random person's information. So you might provide our passport or something like that. And the controller has to provide this information within a month or explain why they can't. So maybe they can't because it was deleted already. Maybe they can't because it's gonna take a month to, to do and they just can't afford to do that. So unless they've got a really, really good reason, they have to provide the information, which 
is something I think most of us don't really know about. It is quite a powerful thing and something which I think companies don't particularly like you doing. Sometimes the controller can charge a small fee, but actually really they should provide your information for free. So to be really clear, this is your information. I can't request somebody else's information, but I can request you know, all of the emails sent about me. I can request all of the internal comments on the system about me. And they have to provide it or give a really, really clear reason why they can't. Another right which individuals can have is request for data to get changed or deleted. And if you request it to be deleted, again, unless there was a really, really good reason, they must delete it or they could get fined if they were caught. So this piece of legislation, the Data Protection Act, does provide lots of rights for individuals and also quite a few conditions which organisations have to follow or they can be charged a lot of money.